Hey y'all, welcome to Water Break. We're back after a week off. Yeah. We were we were having a little family vacation where we didn't. I didn't at least I, I didn't follow any health. No. Um, <laughs> uh, we vacation differently. Our health codes. I broke them all. It was great. <laughs> and we should vacation more like that, more often. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say no to that. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. Um. Uh. If for those for those who of you are new, we we need to come up with like a tagline like uh, the intersection of faith and health. No, no that's need, dumb. No, no, don't please. Don't, Not that one. Never say that again. Faith and fitness. No, I don't know nope, that either. Not that one either. Yeah. But yeah, we need to do some like branding or some tag yeah. tagging. Yeah. We'll we'll figure it out. You so guys can the, email us some ideas. Yeah. Wrench. What's our email address, baby? Wrenchmedia at gmail.com. No, wrenchmedia. At gmail.com. Don't wrench say the wrong one. At gmail.com. Uh, if you're kind of new and just tuning in to what we're doing, you know, um, the podcast is hosted on our Fight, Laugh, Feast network. You can actually go and download our app. That's the best way we recommend you to kind of connect with us. Uh, cancel culture and all that stuff. Actually, can, um, listening to our, us on our app is the best way to go. But um, mm-hmm. we're part of the Fight, Laugh, Feast network. Uh, Water Break was actually a show originally started just kind of a, a couple years ago to um, kind of hit some of my own personal strings on kind of faith culture and politics and so forth and and uh over the years as my, my workload shifts and changes across politics we've actually been talking about doing our own show for since probably covid at least oh yeah uh and we so were just never able to pull it together but finally we kind of pulled it together so water break is now kind of the umbrella under which me and my wife kind of talk about um uh faith and fitness <laughs> uh. and, and health <laughs> and i'm uh um uh so that's kind of i guess what water break is is about and so uh we really want to approach this subject go back and listen to our first episode our first episode is i think very helpful kind of gives you the context of what we're trying to do we want to approach health not like a legalist would and and not like a trendsetter would want to uh you know you know we don't want to be trendy in how we view our health we don't want to be legalistic in how we view our health but we 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 want to approach the subject in a way that it's kind of freeing there's a lot of guilt around you know women in health men in health there's a lot of guilt around food dieting and so forth but we want to approach the subject in a way where, where it's helpful and refreshing and not driven by guilt and trends and so forth so that's kind of i guess the gist of um uh, our show you, anything you want to add to that baby yeah i mean also i just think there's so much information out there a lot of it um conflicting you know and it's just there's it's just a lot to sift through and so we're we're hoping that we can help with that also just kind of cut through some of that and yeah. um, hopefully create some sort of perspective or a helpful, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, I don't know, insight into all this. You being a regular person who isn't really into, I don't know. I'm a regular, you're a regular, I'm a regular guy. guy. We're going to do a whole show about just you. Just a today. regular water boy. <laughs> and then I've yep. done, I've been in the deep in the space for like 20 years. Yeah, so between right. the two of us, we hope we can strike some sort of middle yeah. ground that yeah. um, from a Christian perspective that actually is mm-hmm. um, helpful in a actually like p- applicable way. Cause mm-hmm. that's another issue. Yeah. A lot of times, and I guess this is kind of to the theme of what we're going to talk about today in yeah. a lot of ways, but a lot of times there's, uh, you know, best case scenario type advice given, or like if you were rich and paid to be fit and had no children, and if you had a four hour work this week, this is what you should do. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. and maybe it's true, but mm-hmm. like, it's like who in the world can actually do that? So we're trying to talk about what are things that people, real people mm-hmm. can actually do. Yeah. And so uh, before we get into topic, one more thing is um, we have our national conference, uh, yeah. prodigalamerica.com is where you can go. Prodigalamerica.com. It's October 31st through November 2nd. It really is a very friendly, friendly, a family friendly conference. I and mean, we have hundreds of kids join us with, with families. And, um, uh, you know, we, we have about 1500, uh, people that have been attending our conferences. I'm hoping we're in Fort Worth this year. So I'm praying for 3000 people to attend. And it's a very good size, um, wonderful audience. Um, uh, lots of kids around. It's, it's a blast. So we'd hope to see you in Fort Worth. Uh, Annie, of course, will be there with me. Yes, uh, look forward to it. In, in Fort Worth, October 31st through November 2nd in Fort Worth, Texas, the promised land, as you might know it. So today's topic is, um, you know, what about the dudes? We haven't we haven't yes. talked about um, uh, men very much. And it's not, um, that's not, um, you know, it's just we're covering all sorts of topics. But, uh, you know, as, as we were, I was kind of thinking about um, this topic, you know, we live in a very different world than i would say a lot of um the history of the world so our context is very different we have cars we have Mm -hmm. cell phones we have 
and door Eric and Ishner, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, past history, past civil societies never got to some of the advanced points that we've gotten to in terms yeah. of technology and so forth. And with that's come a lot of men, um, our jobs are different. Right. Um, we aren't, um, uh, there's a lot of men who have jobs inside, not outside, um, uh, at a computer sitting at a desk six to eight hours a day, um, you know, air conditioning, yeah. you know, it's just amazing. And so I think with that, uh, uh, you know, our, our health shifts with kind of the external environment and what we're around and, and, and mm-hmm. what we're able to maybe get away with or not get away with in our, in our health and our food and, and, and so forth. So I think kind of in our modern context, um, well, I, I don't think there's ever been in the history of the world where people would pay to go to a gym to work out and no, sweat. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. You know? Well, it's actually really weird to think about it because like yeah. the whole concept of a gym is such a new, in terms yeah. of like human history, ah. it's such a new construct. Yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah concept. Yeah. And we're like fatter and more unhealthy than ever. Yeah. And like we have more gym memberships and more right. supplements and mm-hmm. more people are caring about or trying mm-hmm. and doing all these extra things yeah. outside of their, you know, like regular life to be fit. And it's like really not going well. <laughs> I should have, I should have looked up the numbers before this, but like the um, health and fitness industry is a well, billions a of billions of dollar industry. industry. Yeah. It's a huge industry. So we're spending yeah. more money on our health than oh, ever yeah. before in yeah, any yeah, society. Yeah. Yes. And, um, we're, you know, um, I mean, I'm, I know some previous societies had cancer, previous societies had heart attacks, previous society, you know, but it seems like that arguably sti- not as much as now statistically, but, you know. um, you can measure our unhealthiness in our society in a way that we wouldn't, wouldn't able to in the past. Yeah, um, that's true. You know, because of, uh, you know, where we're at. And so we're a very stagnant population, um, especially men who are trying to provide their families and end up in this indoor situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm on the phone on yeah. my computer, on the microphone, you know, eight hours a day. That's oh, my, yeah. that's my job. So I'm largely sitting in a chair, staring at a screen or staring at a, a camera. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I remember when we first got married in, in college, I played basketball in college down in California. I think I was, I was six foot two, um, 185, like dripping wet. Yeah. Really thin. Like, was really, like thin. really thin, um, really springy and athletic. Um, uh, but then when I graduated college over the years, uh, I think when I married you, I must have been probably 190, 195. This, I was probably about 190. Not much, not much difference between my 185. I was probably 190. Yeah, you're still or, really thin. You're still married, pretty yeah. thin. You go back and look, look back. Uh, actually, there's in 2005, there was no um, cameras, no, no uh, like, smartphones. Like smartphones. There's no yeah, smartphones. Right, like, yeah. um, but I still got old pictures of myself and, you know, pretty skinny. So that, and then. The first year, our first year of marriage, and and Annie wasn't like an amazing cook. I really um, was not. No, but and I did bake a lot back then. You you were more of a baker. That's yeah, true. I did that, bake that, a lot that back is, then. That is true. We just we we fattened you right up. <laughs> I I gained like twenty. I gained my freshman twenty. My first yeah, year of marriage. Yeah, I'm pretty and, sure and I had like stretch common. stretch marks on my legs that's or like something a common, like that. Yeah. That's a common theme yeah. for sure. But that's yeah. like that's a little more specific. That's like first year of marriage. But like also, I wasn't in the office yet. No. At some point, halfway through our first year of marriage, that's when I went in the office. I was working construction. Yeah. And then halfway through. Um, so I gained. Oh, interesting. I wonder if it was more like I gained that weight when I got into the office. But I probably gained 20, 20 pounds my first year of marriage to you. So I went up yeah. to, yeah. you know, 205. And then now I'm probably about 225 right now, um, excluding vacation weight. We, um, <laughs> we, we, we shall not talk about that. Weight. It doesn't count. But, you know, basically, <laughs> since I got married in 2005, I mean, this is probably the typical man's journey, too. A lot of the time, yeah. Where, you, you know, you get married, you go to work, you focus on work, you focus on raising kids, you focus, you know. Yeah. And then um, 20 years into it, which is now about where we're at. Almost, yeah. Um, I'm, you know, 30 to 40 pounds different. And everything, and 185 was pretty light too. I mean, I, yeah, I you could needed have, some of it. You I could have gained some. some of that weight. But there's usually an insidious, especially as people, and this is true of women too, get past mm-hmm. around 30. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it starts a little earlier. If you're yeah. if you're a lean dude, sometimes it hits later. But there's yeah. like that insidious, like couple pounds a year. Yeah, that usually, unless you're that really stays. You yeah, know? That, yeah. You ju- that creep yeah. that just slowly builds up, and mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. for a lot of different reasons. But yeah, no, a lot of guys are in are just like you. Yeah. And are in the same kind of boat. And it's funny because like, I have so many thoughts about this. It's I, so much of my career, probably because I am a woman, I, I've I've worked with 
majority women Mm -hmm. um, on the exercise front, on the nutrition front, Mm -hmm. whatever. Women are more complicated. Women tend to have, um, in some ways, more issues because of that. We're more hormonally complex where we uh, we cycle every month. We Mm -hmm. have to deal with, you know, uh, giving birth. Up and and down of hormones. Yeah, yeah. Just like, like so we're just more of a complex case. And women are also just way more likely to um, get a trainer, mm-hmm. to get a nutritionist, to in general ask for help. Because ga- ga- <laughs> guys can do it themselves. Well, and I mean, they're, they're, what's that? What's that age old? Guys thing? don't need like, to ask for directions. Yeah, and they, they don't, don't ask for, for trainer. Well, yeah, 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 and so it's way more rare. Yeah. And, and women do tend to take. I mean, they seem to naturally care a little bit more about their health and t- care a little more even about how they look. Mm-hmm. Even, um, of course, there's exceptions, but. Um, uh, all of that, all those reasons combined, a, a lot of my um, attention and message has been towards women. And I would say, if you just look at the broader like health and fitness kind mm-hmm. of culture and mm-hmm. how it messages, and if you get on Instagram or you get on TikTok talk and just kind of the messaging that you mm-hmm. see, th- really a lot of it is is geared towards women mm-hmm. for that. I think for that reason is because mm-hmm. women are the biggest consumers of it. Now there's the subset of like, and I want to mention this because this this matters. There is the subset of like the meathead gym bro, you know, T Nation mind pump guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a big market to those guys. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. There's really nothing wrong if you're if you have the time and the ability and the knowledge to be in the gym, have mm-hmm. lifting heavy weights an hour and a half to two hours a day, and you just love pounding protein, and that's just kind of like your life, and it's working for you. Then that's totally fine. But so there, there is marketing to those guys, but, but all the other guys, mm-hmm. which is like majority, especially like when I look at the men in, in our, like our, you know, Moscow community, like in our Christian community, most of you guys are not lazy. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of, I look around at men who are like in their thirties in their forties. And I definitely see a trend of um, unhealth and mm-hmm. you can just see it, you know, like the big mm-hmm. belly and the like, my gosh. I don't think you could run a hundred meters without hurting yourself. And like, I would, I, your blood, blood work is probably really bad. Your blood pressure is probably through the roof. And I see unhealth, but it's not due to, for the most part, men being lazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's way more. I think um, guys running into the same issues that you run into for years, which is just like, you are out there hustling. You are, you always are working on several different things at once, starting mm-hmm. businesses, having your hand in this, having your hand in that. Yeah, right. You're working from sun up to sundown. You add kids in, you're mm-hmm. the kind of dad and all these other guys I think are too, who are like active present dads. Yeah, right? right. So you're mm-hmm. like, you know, we aren't going to the bar night. We no, aren't like you're, you're, disassociating you're, from the family. I mean, he was getting up mm-hmm. in the middle of the night to help feed babies yeah. along with me. I mean, they're, they're standing in the back of the church, bouncing the fussy baby. Right, right. And I mean, they're coaching all their kids soccer teams. I mean, yeah. that's the season we're so, just coming so when, out of. So when can the dad work out? Exactly. If he's doing, and yeah. and yeah. I know this has been true for you. And it took me a long time because for, uh, it took me a long time to figure this out about you that the, the ad, the age old adage that I was taught in trainer school which is just, you just got to make time for it. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you just need to do an hour a day in the gym. And if you aren't making it happen, then there's something wrong with you. You're not prioritizing mm-hmm. enough. You don't want it enough. Get up earlier, stay up later, whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. That's what you're taught. Mm-hmm. And that kind of works when you're like single mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, maybe paid to be fit like personal trainers are. But that message to regular people, mm-hmm. like a dad of four, who's like trying to be a good dad and he's coaching all the teams and, and running all the businesses probably has 10 years of sleep debt that needs to be paid off. I know that's true for you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that message doesn't work and even with you for years we've tried this we've tried that but it's just like you're not paid to be fit Mm -hmm. you're incredibly busy not like it's not an actual an excuse in your case you actually are incredibly busy and any this is the big one and i think a lot of dads will resonate with this any second of spare time that you do have Mm -hmm. you are not going to go spend that at the gym you're gonna Mm -hmm. go spend that with your family and i really can't really begrudge you for that. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the the whole thing that we're, the whole you know conversation we're trying to have right now is for guys like that. Right. And right. it's like, what are you supposed to do? Because I think yeah. what happens is a lot of those guys just end up doing nothing because yeah. they're just like, I, I can't where, do Where can I fit anything I in? I can't fit yeah. anything yeah. in. Can I can't I do? do the yeah. traditional model. I mean, yeah. you're not going to count your calories. You don't have time. You mm-hmm. don't care. Mm-hmm. You're not going to you know wake up at, wait, you're already getting up at five. So you're not going to get up at four. And arguably you'll probably do more harm than good. Right. Sleeping even less. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> In order to work out, yeah. like there's, you know, whole studies dedicated to that. So we want to talk about like, what are guys like that? Which right. I think is most men, mm-hmm. at least in our community, like right. what can they do yeah. to make some sort of marketable difference in their health? And, and I want you guys, because to- I would say because the current trend right now 
is if, you know, I'm 225 now and I kind of keep up with what I'm doing now. I mean, I right. could be 245 right. in the next, you know, 20 years. Exactly. It's, it's not a great trajectory and, and if part you don't of, intervene. Yeah. And yeah. part of how you, you, brought the, you brought this up before, but, you know, you just want to be functional when you've got grandkids. You know, when you're right. 70 years old, you want to be able to pick up your grandkids, you know. Totally, totally. You want to help yeah. your kids move into their new house, whatever. Yeah. And, and just like leave and live to see, you know, yeah. not just like live to see your grandkids or even yeah. great grandkids, but actually be able to like pick them up, yeah. play with them. Yeah. Like, you know, we're post-millennial. Like we've talked about in past right. shows. Like we want to think long-term and it's very easy for you hardworking mm. dads who are exhausted. You're burdening a ton of stress. That's another thing that, hit, that hits mm. your guys' health so much mm. is that all the financial, you know, and if you're doing it right as a husband, you're not letting that touch your wife really, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And like you guys just shoulder a lot and mm -hmm. that there's no way. I was just talking to Neil. No, it wasn't Neil. I was talking to Sharon about this right before we recorded. Like, no matter how like spiritually sound you guys are, and you're a really good example of this, and no matter how like mentally and emotionally you handle or carry all that stress, your body, <laughs> it still takes a toll on your body. And it yep. usually shows up, like yep. your blood work doesn't lie. It shows up in your blood pressure. Yep. It shows yep. up in your, it shows up somewhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you just need, we, we need to be mindful of these things and we need to figure out, okay, what's like the minimum effective dose? Like what's the smartest approach, the most practical doable approach for guys like you who really oftentimes time comes to zero. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to be a gym rat. You mm -hmm. have no desire to be a gym rat. And, and maybe, you know, and this is what I want to say, what we're talking about today is like minimal effective dose. It's mm -hmm. not like if someone was going to ask me, what is the ideal fitness health routine? It would be more than this mm -hmm. for sure. And maybe in another phase of life, you know, like maybe one probably, I don't know. You're always someone who's, you're always biting up more than you can chew, but it's like, you know, Maybe when your kids are little, this is what you do. Maybe when they move out and you have a little more time, you do actually prioritize getting in the gym and yeah. lifting some heavier weight and improving your strength and your yeah. longevity yeah. that way. That's great. But a lot of times we're just, it, we'll find ourselves at least sometimes in a season where that's just not doable. So yeah. it's like, okay, what can we do? Right, right. And that's what we want to talk about. And so about three and a half months ago or so. Oh, yeah. Um, me and Annie um, kind of talked through a, a, a way of maybe um, starting, a good starting point for me and a good starting point for you know, what, given my schedule, given like my context and everything, yeah. my work life, family life, you know, um, I mean, I hadn't had a Saturday free from November until about two weeks ago. Right. Yeah. Um, cause I was working or coaching basketball or oh, whatever. Yeah. Just, I and mean, so kind of given yeah. that, given that context, you know, what are some of the adjustments we can do? And one of the things I like, um, we've talked about this before we talked about, you know, start by getting blood work. Yeah, um, and, that's number one. And the I, thing, I would say, yeah, yeah. And I th the thing I, I like about that for me is because I think there's so much feelings and emotions and subjectivity that is continually brought into the health world. Mm -hmm. um, that like, well, the blood work is is nice, is because it kind of uh, it puts kind of some objective, you know, markers into your life about yes. oh, you know, you you know, in Idaho we constantly struggle with low vitamin D. I mean, yes. that's just you know. There's in the winter, there's not much sun and it's cold and the days are short. Mm -hmm. we, you know, our, our yeah. winter days can, the sun can come up about seven thirty and can go down about four thirty. I mean, that's literally our very winter short, at the yeah. very shortest of the day in the winter. That's what can happen. Yeah. So you can see that in the blood, in the blood results, you can see it's yeah. like, Oh, Gabe has low vitamin D, which I did when we got my blood work back in November. No surprise. I mean, yeah, no surprise. Everybody surprised in the that. Pacific Northwest is, is deficient yeah. in vitamin D, but yeah, no yeah. blood work is huge. I mean, you want to know, uh, we can talk about it if you want to yeah, like yeah, some I'll, basic markers, you want to yeah. know what to ask for. Obviously you need a doctor who's going to cooperate, <laughs> uh, uh, but just some basic, um, uh, just basic blood markers mm -hmm. is a good place to start. Just so you know what your baseline is and where your particular, uh, issues of unhealth are because everybody's different. Some of it's due to genetics. Some of it's due to just looking mm -hmm. out. Some of it's due to life, you know, lifestyle up to that point, mm -hmm. uh, diet up to that point. But usually, I mean, I have everybody look number one at your, you know, your glucose, your glucose, your fasted glucose. If you just get a CMP, um, uh, that's a comprehensive metabolic panel. It's very standard. Most mm -hmm. doctors order that once a year if you're getting annual blood work. If you just get right. that, you'll get your fasted glucose. But I would add on to that a fasted insulin. Um, mm -hmm. Most doctors will do it, but it, they what's won't. the difference between fasted insulin and fasted glucose? So the so your your fasted glucose is just simply when you wake up in the morning before you've eaten anything, mm -hmm. how much glucose, blood, you know, sugar is yeah. it just sitting in your blood, and um, that's telling. 
Um, you do need, there's nuance to it. So you want either your doctor or someone, you want to be talking with someone who really understands kind of the ins and outs of that. But like, for example, when we got yours done at mm -hmm. first, it was like up in the one twenties and that's way too high. Mm -hmm. um, My fasted glucose. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's yeah. way too high. <laughs> yeah. No matter, no matter who you are. Yeah. So that was good to know. Like, okay, yeah. we have some blood sugar work to do. Yeah. Fasted insulin. That's how much Insulin is currently sitting in your bloodstream. And remember, your, your insulin is a hormone that your pancreas sends out to clear glucose. Okay. And the reason I like fasted insulin, and it's still, um, it kind of baffles me that doctors don't just automatically test that every yeah. year. Uh -huh. um, because oftentimes fasted insulin will... Uh, creep up and become, uh, you know, well out of range too high uh -huh. way before it shows up in your glucose or your A1C. Mm -hmm. So if we were thinking really preventatively, which I think we all should, uh, a fasted insulin uh -huh. is a really good thing to look at. And so that term that we talk about all the time on the show, insulin resistance, which uh -huh. is kind of your precursor to full on diabetes, uh -huh. your fasted insulin will will kind of Will your fast uh, insulin if, if be it's, high or if low? It's, if it's, if it's high. high, exactly, okay. and and it's high on you too, and that's another thing we knew we needed to work uh -huh. on. And it's no surprise. So if it's high, it shouldn't that be clearing the glucose? Well, um, what, does that make, question make sense? Yeah, but what you want is cells in your body that are very insulin sensitive, mm -hmm. which would mean that it takes very little insulin to effectively clear the glucose that is in your I bloodstream see. and yep. can deposit it into your cells, yep. ideally to be burned for energy. Okay, so what's that a, what, what's a, yeah, no, 100%. Um, so what would the scenario look like? Let's say I had high glucose and a low insulin in my blood. What would that be communicating? That's really, it's rare uh -huh. to have. It's it's more common to have it the other way around, having uh -huh. your glucose in range. Yep. Which and again, high that, insulin. And then, but insulin being high, meaning yep. you're on a trajectory. Yeah. It's, uh, is, it, is it very, basically saying it's very inefficient. The insulin's very inefficient in clearing sugar. If the glucose is still in range, yep. but the insulin is high. Yep. Yeah. So yep. it means like, okay, it's getting it done. And that's yep. why your glucose is like, okay, maybe you're like at a 95 yeah. and you have to be like over a hundred to be flagged as high, which I also have a problem with that, but that's just kind of our lab ranges. Uh -huh. But if your insulin is like up in the thirties, that means your body is pumping insulin out yep. in attempts to clear Keep it, low. it effectively. Yep. Exactly. Uh -huh. And you end up with what they call insulin resistance where your cells become resistant uh -huh. to that insulin. And what we want is sensitivity yeah. and, and yeah. really one of the biggest markers of health long-term is the ability to manage your insulin. Uh, yeah. That's very, very, very okay. important. And so, part of this, anyways. you know, a little context, a little, I'm just talking about all my health today. A um, little context is I got diabetes in my family. Yeah. It's a, a grandpa so had it. My dad died um, from, he had a heart attack, but and basically, basically it's yeah. diabetes that really yeah. got him. So your con the everything. context really matters. Yeah, so for right, you, right. Um, that really matters. And we know we have work to do. Yeah in terms of managing your insulin and your blood right. glucose. Um, right. Some other markers, I would look at your yeah. lipids, right? Most doctors will- the What's a lipid? So like your cholesterol panel. Okay. Um, and more than anything, I'd pay attention to your trigs and your HDL. You want your HDL be, is to be as high as possible and your triglycerides, your trigs to be on the lower side. I care about those personally more than I care about your LDL, which is, you know, the classic bad- um, bad cholesterol. But again, mm. for some people, no problem. Like you, for example, your lipids were fine. Yeah. It was, it was like solid. Nothing, nothing. Solid lipids. No, solid, solid lipids. Yep. So I was like, wow, good job. But that was great. I made lipids great again. That was great because we are moving you towards some, we're, uh, we're moving you towards spending some time in l low carb. And the fact that your lipid panel looks so good tells me um, without even do, without doing further testing, which you can do, that your body handles saturated fat decently well. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's great because yeah. that's that's what we're going to be eating. Yep. <laughs> so I would look at lipids. Um, that matters. Um, and I would also look at like vitamin D, like we talked about, and then liver enzymes. That's a huge one. And especially you guys, uh, Presbyterians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Presbyterians like to drink yep. a lot. And I don't mm -hmm. have a problem with enjoying your scotch. Yep. But man, if you are sedentary, if yep. you generally also don't eat great yep. and you drink scotch and wine and whatever yep. every night, um, a lot of times you look at you look at your uh, liver, panel liver and, your yeah. liver enzymes yeah. and they are not looking so good. And yeah. you really um, you want to watch that because mm -hmm. your liver is a very, very, very important organ. Mm -hmm. um, it basically is the detoxifier of your entire body. Yeah. So if you're eating high sugar, high processed foods. Right. Liver takes out, eat, out, eating out, and then oh, and then yeah. addition to that you have a glass of wine and scotch and or if you're whatever. Just you know, throwing alcohol at it just yep. constantly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it really uh, it matters. So yeah. your liver enzymes is another big one, especially yeah. in this community. Yeah. <laughs> and yours, 
not looking so good. So yeah. we had our yeah. work cut out for us yeah. there. But again, uh, you know, uh, you wouldn't know if you didn't test. So I would yeah. say yeah, the insulin, the glucose. So I preferred lipids. ignorance before this. I Yeah, you did. I was like, I didn't does. want to test for the, long, the longest time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glucose, insulin, lipid panel, yep. cholesterol, all that. Yep. Uh, um, liver. Liver, for uh -huh. sure. Vitamin D. And then, you know, if I was working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I depending on uh, nuance and depending on their particular context, uh -huh. I might look at a few more things. But that's a great place to start. A testosterone is also a really good one to look at just mm -hmm. to see kind of where you're at because yep. that's a big one. And a lot of guys... Um, are really low. Yeah, Testosterone right. is kind of, it's kind of a issue right, right now. Right. Um, and then the other one I'm just going to say that is really important. That's not a blood test. Um, it's blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And also uh, this speaking. And of just, we have our own blood pressure machine at home now. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you should, you guys, because yeah. they're pretty cheap now. They are pretty, cheap. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I think I got it for like 30 bucks or something yeah, at like Walmart, uh -huh. but I recommend it because number one, white coat hypertension, which is basically it's a real thing. It is a real thing. I have it. And it's just, for those of you who aren't familiar with that, it's just when you are at the doctor's office and then you know that they're going to take your blood pressure. And they and take out they their take, cold stethoscope. And, and then they and take then the they, blood pressure. Yep. And it doesn't matter, guys. Like, I don't get nervous at doctor's offices at all. I'm not mm. a nervous person, but I still have it. Like, my blood pressure in a doctor's office, no matter what. It's always high. Is high. And when I go home at any point throughout the day, not just in the morning, it's actually lower than average. Yeah. So you want to check that. That's you, funny. for example, though, That's in the funny. doctor's office, your blood it pressure is high. It doesn't matter. Location did and not also matter. also when you're home, <laughs> it's high. And that yeah. is, it is truly a silent killer and it's a big deal. And I think the you dads, again, who are working hard, right. not a lot of time to do a lot of Carrying cardio. Carrying a big load. Yeah, yep. care, stress, uh, lack of cardiovascular exercise. Um, and then really... Um, funny, actually, I've been doing some, I've been doing a little bit of a deep dive into blood pressure because it's such a problem. Uh, so many, and, and it seems to be more of an issue for men than women. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's anecdotally what I, that's just what I've been picking up on is just, it's men. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you don't have symptoms. It's not like you walk around being like, oh, my blood pressure. Yeah. That's why they call it the silent killer. But yeah. um, your doctor usually makes you take it. And so that's how you know. But um, uh, a lot of the experts that I've been reading and listening to um, agree that the two biggest causes of blood pressure, and this is still a little controversial. A lot of different people think there's, yeah, there, there is some disagreement here, but there, I have found um, a lot of them think that the two biggest causes are sleep apnea mm -hmm. and insulin resistance, which is interesting. And I, I so I, I, that's connected to high blood pressure the or is the they driver the driving of high force blood. would be the, two, the sleep biggest apnea sleep apnea and insulin, and insulin resistance. resistance. So if you think of how many dudes and you're on the line, I would say like, you know, if you snore, if you wake up at night, if your wife is like, oh yeah, I have to sleep with earplugs. I cannot sleep. He is so loud. Um, that's most men, mm -hmm. honestly, especially if you tend towards being overweight. One of the biggest ways to cure sleep apnea is just to lose, lose weight. weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, uh, that drives blood pressure up, yep. which is really, really interesting. And then insulin resistance, which we just talked about, um, yeah. they're totally linked together. And most of the time, if you start bringing that, getting that blood sugar management, that insulin under control, you see that blood pressure go down. So I just thought I would toss that out there. But don't yeah. forget blood pressure. It's a really big deal. Yeah. And so uh, we kind of went through this blood um panel test about about three months ago and then yeah. and then what you were able to do is you kind of looked at the blood panel test oh oh that was one comment i wanted to make about um uh, high blood pressure uh first before we get into the blood panel stuff um was that it a lot of doctors if you have high blood pressure and then you know let's say three four visits in a row or five visits, whatever right. they'll start slapping you with a, a statin or something, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, they'll they'll yeah, start they're... just medicating you Yes. versus like trying to actually, um, well, maybe there's some natural ways we can adjust that before you get on a statin. Because once you get on a statin, it seems to be it's like kind of like a slippery slope into other medications and so yeah, forth. I mean, there's a lot there with, mm -hmm. this, with the statin thing. Now, yeah. listen, I, I'm torn about, I mean, uh, generally speaking, modern medicine does not take into account like lifestyle and nutrition. It does not push the potency and importance of lifestyle and nutrition uh -huh. half as or at all as much as it should for sure. Um, but I will say that a lot of you dudes walking around have dangerously high yeah. blood pressure. You uh -huh. don't realize it, you know, you don't feel it, yeah. but you do. It shows up, you know, when they read it. And I think a lot of these doctors know that if they tell you, Hey, stop eating processed food, yeah. um, sleep better. Like that's not going to, you're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's yeah. in their defense and yeah. they're like, I'd rather you be on a statin than have a heart attack. And so some of that's on us, you know, like we, 
it does take some self-educating because most doctors are not going to say to you like, hey, one of the biggest um, things that you can do to help your blood pressure come down is, yeah, mm -hmm. like um, fix your sleep issues, uh, fix your insulin resistance, but also take a high dose magnesium. Mm -hmm. Magtorate is a huge one um, uh, at, at fairly high doses. And also, you know, bring your potassium up. I mean, there's things you can do. And mm -hmm. most doctors, most doctors don't even know. Honestly. Yep. Uh, and so they, I think they should be pushing that, but um, really, really high blood pressure is a really big issue. And I think most of the people that walk into their office are looking for a pill. They have no desire to <laughs> right. exercise, change their diet. Hopefully that's not you guys, you know, we're, that's not what we're preaching, but I'm just saying that's, yeah. that's what they're, yeah. that's what they're working with. But yeah, there are right. a lot of things that you could do and that I would absolutely try uh, first before I put someone on a statin yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So we went through this blood panel exercise yep. with me back in November. And then, yep. um, you know, like we already mentioned, like my vitamin D was low. And so, well, that's an easy fix. Just subscribe you yeah, know, some I, I either. It's either suntan, which you can't do in Idaho or, or add more vitamin D. Yeah. Um, yeah. I gave you, a, I you know. gave you, I basically looked at your blood work and I just yeah. gave you a hand. I gave you a handful of targeted, yeah. um, targeted, uh -huh. supplements yeah. some for blood sugar some yeah. for liver uh -huh. which right. we just remeasured yeah. um and it did a lot yeah it's already actually it's already yeah it did a improved. lot for you yeah, yeah. um and then yeah vitamin d and mm -hmm. a few other things and again yeah. it's kind of and we just started you on a higher dose magnesium to yeah. see what that will do for your because magnesium blood. could Im impact blood pressure Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like when women, this is really interesting. Um, when women go into the hospital with preeclampsia, do you know what that, you, yeah, yeah, yeah um, like, like really, yeah. really dangerously high blood pressure, yeah. which is fairly, can be common in yeah. pregnancy, especially uh -huh. at the end. Um, the treatment for that is super, super high dose magnesium mm -hmm. to bring their blood pressure down. So yeah, yeah. it actually, um, cause it has that. And, and this is why people take it at night. Um, because It'll make it, you go to it's, sleep too. It's pro yeah, relaxation. Or, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it, so and it, it's, and it relaxes everything, yeah. including your vessels. You know, uh -huh. so it actually can be quite effective. And I'm not saying it's a panacea. Also, with blood pressure, uh, genetics plays a big role. Yeah. With and some people are. I, I have. I have. It's more rare, but I've worked with people who are the pinnacle of health, not mm -hmm. overweight, active, best diet you've ever yeah. seen, and their blood yeah, pressure high is still high. Pressure, exactly. Yeah, right. Their blood pressure is still high, and also stress is a huge driver too. Just because I'm really strong. Well, you know. And the stress thing is hard because there's <laughs> some things you can do to mitigate stress. Yeah. But there's also for guys like you, it's like, what are you going to like quit your job or like just yeah, pick your right. favorite kid and only raise You that have to one? carry your family yeah, and your job. So you have to carry this load. Telling yeah. moms and dads to de-stress their life. Like yeah. there's only so much you can do. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah. can, it can be a hard one, but, but there are some things you can try it. I would certainly try all these things, yeah. diet, exercise, uh, some supplements before I yeah, yeah. got on a stand. But yeah. anyways, and that's, and that's one thing that Annie's um, been working with clients on for years now. Uh, is kind of these blood panels and you know, helping them kind of to adjust, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever nutritional or dietary supplements in their lifestyle to maybe uh, help as as uh, with without maybe leaning on medication as much totally. as possible through totally. this whole process. Every yeah. every um, supplement that I've got you on right now is completely natural and yeah. it, it will do zero has has almost no side of like there's yeah. no harms there right. as opposed to some of these pharmaceutical things where yeah. a lot of them come with a pretty long list of yeah. suicide uh, yeah. <laughs> suicide Thoughts of your suicide blood pressure will go down yeah, yeah. but you might go your but thumb. you might die that's why your blood pressure right. went down because you're, right. you're dead and but. and you know there 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 totally can be a place for those sorts of drugs and yeah. they can save people's lives but I do think that we lean on them way too much yeah. um, doctors hand them out way too soon yeah. and there's a lot to be done um, mm -hmm. with just the diet and exercise side of things so anyways so yeah so we gave you some targeted um, supplements yeah. and then do you want to talk about some of the other little things yeah i was gonna I just as, as quickly we, we we got about uh maybe 10 15 minutes left here but let's um uh so number one was kind of get the blood panel and then what's some of the other things you wanted to hit yeah in recommendations here i mean it's pretty simple because part yeah. of what you need for a dude like you is it has to be simple and it has to be doable or you're just going to be like i'm not doing it yeah like yeah. for real no this is and and as yeah. simple as annie made it for me too i still cheated he cheated yeah. and did throw a few tantrums yeah. but you know mm -hmm. that's built into the price of the i understand you know it's about it's part like being, I said, from day one, any diet that conflicts with the Lord's <laughs> Supper, bread and wine, I told him he I'm couldn't take communion. I was I'm like, against. you absolutely can't have communion. <laughs> she suspended and me from I suspended supper. <laughs> him from the Lord's Supper on behalf That's of his blood. Funny, I'm just kidding, That's guys. We didn't, we didn't do that. But anyways, okay. Number one, um, we said just, and this is so huge, gentlemen. If you take away, besides just getting- This is number two. Uh, oh, well, oh, sorry. Number one in terms of action steps beyond, beyond blood. getting okay. your blood okay. work done. Okay. So beyond getting your blood work done and finding yeah. someone uh, who knows what they're doing to read it and help you with it, this is, this is the number one uh -huh. action step is stop eating out. Stop eating out. 
Stop eating out. If you mm -hmm. literally didn't even get blood work, but you just were like, starting today, I'm not eating out. I'm not yep. eating fast. Specifically, the kind of food that you would eat at lunchtime or even at breakfast when you're already headed into work and you're in the middle of your day. So this yep. is like your McDonald's, like, what do you call those breakfast things or going to whatever mm, restaurant McGriddles. that you love for lunch four yep. times a week, yep. you know, like eating out makes you unhealthy, like period. Like there really is, I wish it wasn't true, but, uh, but if that's a staple in your life, that is one of the biggest things driving on health, especially if you're not able to be really, really active. But what about Jared at Subway? He lost a lot of weight. Jared lost. He's Jared also in jail Subway. now for pedophilia. We're not, we don't talk about Jared. <laughs> He's not a, There's some confounding Maybe I shouldn't have brought him up. He just kind of, my gosh, argument just ate itself. Never bring up Jared. Yeah. Never bring up Jared. And <laughs> yeah. So just literally stopping out. So, so this is what we did for Gabe um, is number one. We just, we said, and this will tie into the next step, which is stop skipping breakfast. Yeah. Intermittent fasting is really big right now. And uh, we could do a whole different show on that. And I'm fine with it. Um, I would say women are more into it than men, but a lot of men are kind of into it um, in the like commercialized way where you just skip breakfast because it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy to just skip it um, and then move on with your day. But what happens is, um, you usually end up making worse choices at a fast food restaurant right. um, later in the day because you're hungry right. and because you're not home anymore and you can't eat home cooked food. So we just said, okay, you're going to eat eggs every single morning because that's going to help mitigate hunger later right. in the day, right. which it absolutely does, especially eggs. So I'm not saying eat garbage in the morning. Okay. Do not eat banana bread, eat right. eggs every right. morning. Um, and if you can't do eggs for some reason, make it like Greek yogurt, something that's very protein, yeah. uh, you know, protein centric. Um, and another reason we're, we're doing that is just because any food you eat at home, you can control, mm -hmm. right? You can control what oils go into it, right. any added ingredients, you can control amount, everything. So easy eggs in the morning. And that, that way he's not quite as hungry at lunchtime. And what we started doing is just saying, we're not eating out. So either you're going to pack left leftovers from last night, mm -hmm. which again, gentlemen, I've said this before, you can do it. Um, if you are like, I'm picky and I don't like leftovers, um, you need to probably get over that. I almost called him my family <laughs> member for that just yeah. right now. But you, I, just, I, I, I to. talk to women <laughs> all the time yeah. who are like, my husband will not eat leftovers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, get him on the phone with me. Yeah, yeah. Like, are you rich? And no. Yeah. Okay. Are you really, really healthy? No. Yeah. Okay. You need to start eating leftovers. Yeah, yeah. Your wife is working real hard to make you a healthy dinner the night before. Make a lot of it. Make it enough for lunch the next yeah. day. Or our fallback was what? What did you take with you if you didn't Oh, yeah, protein, shivers? protein shake. Yeah, a good yeah. quality whey protein. Yeah. 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 Because and a cheese stick. Usually I needed like a cheese he, stick. He found that he needed that. like yeah. some macadamia nuts or a little yeah. beef jerky yeah. or a cheese so stick. So you get a little protein it. protein drink at yeah. lunch and, and then a cheese stick or some nuts or whatever. Yeah. And that, that helped. I, I want to add a couple yeah, of things here. The, did it. That point might sound, the leftover point um, might sound a little picky um, uh, because, you know, I mean, what, what Annie's really getting at is like the. Uh, a lot of the restaurants use kind of like uh, cheaper oils and so mm -hmm. forth that make it you know, that your body has a harder time processing seed oils, particularly some well, seed oils. It's not that um, it has a hard time processing it. It's more like it's toxic to your body and then it will store it in your fat for yeah. like years. Like mm -hmm. it's super so the studies have shown like certain oh, yeah. seed oils will, will, will just stay around for a long time. Especially, so your body doesn't process out. Especially if you're not really active, which is kind of right. That was, that was the point I wanted yeah. to get at was, yeah. you know, again, this goes back to our first comments where like, you know, men, particularly in our era, like we aren't working out. We aren't, our jobs during the day are in the office on the phone yeah. over the computer or stuff like that. So, so your body doesn't have all the various ways of processing that let's say the old economy had or like, yeah, like <laughs> naturally you, you detoxing. You're you don't, you would sweat during the day. You're not burning yeah. it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. So that's, that's why we, we have to maybe, you know, kind of think about some of these things in a little more particular way than previous generations had, because we just don't have, um, the only really way that I, my body's going to detox and process things is through my liver. Oh, well, yeah. unless I, unless I go work out or play basketball or something, which I'm not, really doing well, even and I'm then, not sweating. I don't have various then, other ways of detoxing. It's still going here. through your liver, but really, really active people right. it, to some degree can get away with a little right. bit more truth, right. but that's just right. not who we're talking to yeah. right now. Right. right? That's, I mean, exactly, I mean, well, that's the point. That's why I wanted totally. to say this might sound a little particular or a little, I don't, you know, legalistic what you aren't, you aren't positioning this in any is. legalistic I think way. This but this is in, it, it, in its own little way. Like we talked about the Overton window of food in mm -hmm. past, like how we just need it to shift. I think gentlemen, in particular, this subset of men needs to shift um, their Overton window of what normal lunch food is mm -hmm. going to be. Either it's going to be a whey protein shake because you just didn't have time one way or another, mm -hmm. 
or you need to be a little more disciplined and a little bit for, more forward thinking. Just yeah. pack up whatever yeah. steak and broccoli was for dinner right. the night before and right. take it with you. Just a tiny bit of planning. Right. Write yourself a sticky note, <laughs> mm -hmm. like whatever it takes. And stop looking at eating crappy, inflammatory, low quality fast food almost every day yeah. as normal yeah. or as healthy because it's not. And your blood work yeah. will show you that. Right? right. Like, so we just I think there needs to be a little yeah. bit of a shift. So if you're like, that's insane. Um, your Overton window maybe needs to shift, shift a little bit, especially if you know that your, your health is not where it should be. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, okay. Right. Number three was eat breakfast, eat eggs. You yeah, already stated this. Already uh, one, point, on that. Yep. one point I wanted to make here is like before we made this shift, I was actually, um, doing that intermittent, inter, intermittent fasting thing where I wouldn't eat breakfast. So I'll just right. skip it and go out and I, and yeah, I wouldn't eat till lunch. Do. It's easy to do. It wasn't that difficult, and so I'd, I'd, I probably did that for six months. Well, I didn't really lose any weight. It was actually kind of frustrating. I'm like, I'm yeah. literally not eating from dinner the night before. Maybe I'd have some snacks later because we weren't really um, – so maybe I'd have a snack at 8 o'clock, whatever. But I basically wasn't eating until – you know, from 8 o'clock until noon the next day. Yeah, you didn't see And I wasn't sense. really losing any weight, well, which I is mean, hilarious because I'm like, I'm skipping breakfast. It's not that weird, but yeah. again, a lot of times – what happens is that your hunger catches up with you and you end up mm. eating um, a lot more and a lot less healthful choices. Like what's worse eating two eggs in the morning, extra food yeah. where you, normally you would yep. eat nothing That's right. or like a bunch of like uh, ice cream or a, just think about the kinds of choices you make yeah, at yeah. night uh -huh. versus you make in the morning. Right. I mean, mo the ice cream doesn't usually come out in the morning. <laughs> yeah. It comes out at night. So you're, you're offsetting. I want to live in a world where I can have ice cream for breakfast. Uh, I mean, mm. that's called the new heavens and the new earth. <laughs> We're there. It's, it's not, it's there, but not already. Uh, yeah. <laughs> almost, but not yet. But uh, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, like yeah. you're offsetting yep. uh, way worse eating right. choices that you're going to make later in the day right. because that right. hunger will catch up with yeah. you. And part of that your, is your body just telling you. like. Yeah. You so so the nice thing about these last three months is actually being able to eat eat eggs yeah. and 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 i'm uh, and actually lose weight i mean i lost probably about 10 pounds in, in the last three months just yeah you know chipping away at it just by you know taking supplements and just eating a little making i mean very minor choices my, my choices just shifted yeah um not in any significant way yeah, right. Um, but nope. we'll, we'll finish. We'll finish those well, comments fine. here in a minute. But um, yeah, so we yeah we already covered eat eggs for breakfast, and yep. then uh, in in terms of dinner, um, you know you got to get your wife on the same page here. Most women are more than happy to accommodate um their husband getting healthier. Yeah. I have found that I certainly am, mm -hmm. and I you know anything that your your husband will actually do, <laughs> uh, that will be helpful to you know to his longevity and his health. Most wives are on board, but just look for um a protein centric dinner. Uh, meat and veggies. And I will say, depending on you, depending on, you know, your history, your you know family history and where, when you got your blood work done, where your insulin and glucose are, that's where I would put your carbs. Okay. But it's possible like Gabe right now, we're finding that his, he's seen some improvements in his glucose, but we mm -hmm. still need to figure out how to get this insulin down. He's a little bit more of a challenge, probably genetically. We know that he's got a lot diabetes of diabetes in, in family, his family. So, so we, he may be someone who just yeah. doesn't handle as much carbs as someone else might. So mm -hmm. we're not going to add a lot of carbs in yet for him. But if your right. insulin and glucose are fine, that's where I would eat them. Try to make them clean. Okay. So like uh, sweet potato potatoes, or squash. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. a, your yeah. wife's homemade sour bread. I mean, you don't need to go crazy, but that's a great time to have them. Uh -huh. Again, because you're eating them in a way that you can control what they yeah, are rather yeah. than pigging out on like two Big Macs in yeah. the middle of the day. Oh, and so make, good though. So I know good. they're yummy, but you know, again, we're trying to figure out very practical ways. It takes very little time, you mm. know, and, and we're just being strategic. Eat your carbs at night where your wife can make them for you and they're clean and they're on your terms. And then yeah. after dinner, try to be done eating. Yeah, no more snacking. Try to be yeah. done eating. And if you eat, ate enough protein during the day, it should be no problem. A lot of times when you have late night snacking, it's because you just underate in general yeah. or in particular, you did not eat enough protein earlier in the day. So right. protein. And I, I would say meals. what was, you know, so our, our last three month plan, we're changing, we're shifting in a little bit these next three months, but our last three month plan was I'd eat eggs, you know, standard, you know, healthy uh, lunch or protein shake and mm -hmm. cheese stick or something like that. And then at, at dinner, I'd be able to get my carbs. And I like that. Right. I, I, honestly, I I hate any diets that I'm, – I'm, I'm not really joking when I do say this. Uh, but I hate any diet that really does conflict with, like, the Lord's Supper. Like, bread and I wine. I know you, you do. Know? Yes. And so not being able to have, like, a carb at night, um, uh, you know, or, or taking carbs absolutely out of my diet was like, I'm not – I'm just not interested in that. Um, so we were able to do that at least these last three months. But it still wasn't. Um, as we concluded, it still wasn't really working. My 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 blood sugar 
Uh, my insulin. Your insulin um, still needs some work. Still yeah. needs some work and everything. So we're we're shifting that. We're actually going to shift that mm-hmm. moving forward to where well, I'm just going to have carbs on my Sabbath dinner. My my, my Sabbath dinner. But you know, thing. So even then, I'm not going to do carbs during yeah, the week. But even then, for you, the goal mm-hmm. is not to be there forever. And yeah. we've talked about this: how yeah. going really low carb, really long term, is yeah. not good for your health, and yeah. it can actually cause you to be more insulin resistant. Right. It's that bell yeah. curve, but. There is something to be said about spending um, a, a shorter season yep. there. And mm-hmm. again, you're a little bit of an exception because yep. of your genetics. So, And so if you can kind of pull back, yeah. the whole goal is to, well, maybe your insulin will start kicking in and regulating better. Well, your and cells then, will become ideally more sensitive. More sensitive. Right. So yeah, that yeah. when you do right. have carbohydrates, right. and again, the kind you have matters. You may get to the point where you can handle some basmati rice, a sweet potato, mm-hmm. you know, uh, some sourdough, just fine. Whereas if you're eating something really processed and yeah. terrible, that that still maybe wouldn't be as good of a choice to you. So the quality right. matters. So right. yeah, it, right. it, it's very nuanced. It depends on the on the individual yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So yeah, no, hey, uh, take carbs out or have them at dinner. Yes, uh, depending, on, five depending on your on your um, insulin. Uh, your blood sugar control yeah, right. for sure. And then let's just talk a little bit about the exercise side before we wrap okay, up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, uh, you know, so far we've just talked about the nu- nutrition and nutrition is easy to, th- it's not easy. It's simple. And it's, it's, I guess, easy in that everybody eats like you have to eat. Right. right? right. It's so it's more, you have just, to address that. You, you have, have to, so, yeah, 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 you have yeah. to, um, but everybody eats. So really all we're, we've done here is just swap some things around, be a little bit strategic, yep but you're going to eat regardless. Exercise is a little harder because that's something you add in, uh-huh. right? And again, all these really busy guys who are exhausted and just stressed and have no time. It's it's hard to fathom adding anything in. So what we did, uh, the number one thing I would say for you d- dudes, and remember, this is minimum effective dose. This is not the perfect, like I don't look at, if some guy was like, I want to get ripped, I want to get the healthiest I can get, I wouldn't yeah. just be like, just walk. I, yeah, I would right, say right, do right. more yeah. for sure. But again, for this specific- uh, For a guy like me who's not walking. Like for someone who's doing you know, nothing. Yeah. And it's like, okay, what could we actually get you to do right. that would that would be the most impactful? Uh, number one is just walk. And I've talked about this before. It's true for ladies also, but it's so- so effective for men. I have had some men um, north of 30 who didn't change anything. Yeah, and just about, started walking every and day. And just walked 30 minutes a day yeah. on their lunch break. Uh-huh. Didn't change, just wore whatever they were to work, just walked 30 minutes a day yeah. and dropped like 40 pounds, which yeah. frankly makes me mad. Because, <laughs> yep. And, yep. and most women, women listening, yep. because like it's men just lose weight so much, yeah, yeah. so much more we can easily. Just make little adjustments. I had a buddy who oh just stopped drinking gosh. Coke and he's. Oh lost yeah, weight like I skipped healthy, lunch you know? one time and I lost 50 like, pounds. Exactly. I just took Coke out of my diet and I was so fine. It's actually Kept guys, everything else. Unless yeah. you are you have some sort of medical, you know, there's something weird going on with you, it's actually really simple and quite easy compared to us ladies um, yeah. to lose weight and get healthier. You just have to fit in these small habits and be mm-hmm. consistent. So one thing we did is we moved our treadmill to your office yep. uh-huh. because if you live somewhere like Idaho where a good portion of the year it's dark, it's cold, some people are hardcore. If you can get outside, being out in nature is ideal. Mm-hmm. You know, put the coat on, buy the right shoes, do yeah. it. But um, we thought that your best bet to actually doing it so would be to actually bring, to actually bring yeah. a treadmill uh-huh. into the office. And then yeah. we're trying to, did you already buy that um, thing? I have a desk. Your... I have a little uh, desk that goes on the treadmill. Exactly. A, a, a desk um, connection or extension or something that like you that. You can actually a... put your laptop yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I yeah. actually think this is a brilliant idea yeah. so that you can work mm-hmm. while you walk. Yeah. And we're just looking at like 30 minutes a day. Or take phone calls. I was mostly actually, I mostly calls. took phone calls um, while, I, while I did it. But oh yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. Guys, game changer, game yeah. changer. So mm-hmm. uh, after dinner, if you, if that's when you need to do it after meals is phenomenal for blood sugar control. Like we've talked mm-hmm. about during uh, lunchtime or even just while you're working, walk, get mm-hmm. on your little headset, walk uh, mm-hmm. 30 minutes a day. Huge. The only other thing that we tried adding in are what kind of what we call trigger sessions. Uh, uh, people call them different things. Joel calls it integrated intervals. Trigger session. Jo- uh, Joel who? No, Joel Green. He, yep, he's there you go. The, my, Green. My, yep. my hero right now. Uh, people exercise snacks. That's uh-huh. one I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> exercise trigger snacks. Sec- trigger sessions sounds very masculine. So uh, I was going to go with that because okay. maybe you guys will be more likely to do it. I kind of like, like exercise snacks, exercise but it's, it's snacks. a little misleading. Yeah. So describe uh, what they are and then yeah. your progress with your yeah. push up because so, I think it's pretty cool. So what any, um, what we kind of figured out or what Annie wanted to kind of work with me on was just find, you know, just do, uh, uh push ups in the morning, you know, yeah, do, pick. do three sets of 10. Pick in a, the morning, pick a movement, and Any then movement. and then next month, you know, do three sets of tens of push ups, and then add some, you know, air squats. Yeah, and then the next month, do three sets of, you know, do your push ups, and then air squats, and then add maybe pull ups. So that's pull up bar, pull up bar, which he hates. And um, I'm horrible <laughs> at pull ups. I'm, I'm tall long and gangly, like and you know, it's just I'm horrible at them. Um, 
but uh, they're actually kind of fun because they actually stretch out my body and, you know. A little bit of I, traction. I, I, yeah, a little traction and everything. So I, I, I like the feel, of, at least the initial feel when I hang there. Yeah, so um, how many push-ups and, did you start with and what are you at now three months later? And so I, I, probably I haven't been doing push-ups or any workout for um, probably a couple of years. And uh, so I started out with basically three sets of 10. And it was honestly, it was, I think I remember maybe I started off with uh, two sets of 10 and one set of five actually is probably where I started and off. And when at. you say three sets, remember it's a trigger. So like literally in the morning you would just before like, the shower. Right before I hop in the shower. You do one just set. Bam, bam, bam. And then midday mm -hmm. you'd hit the ground one set. Yeah. And then later in the afternoon, yeah. maybe when you're feeling sleepy, one You do set. one set at night. So you don't you, warm you do. up. You yeah. don't change your clothes. Yeah. You don't have to go to a gym. You, you don't just, sweat. I you mean, just it's just do them. And then you basic. It's yeah. like a max yep. effort. One set. Yeah. So I would do mine, my three sets before the shower, but I did. There were some days where I could only get one set in before shower and then at, you know, lunch or whatever or in my studio, I'd, I'd pump out 10 more on the ground yeah. or something like that. You so, started with 10. Um, where are you at start now? At, start at 10. Now I can do um, uh, 50 in a row, you know, Which so I can just do, awesome. you know, one set of 50, bam, bam, bam. Yeah, and it literally. I mean, I can do that faster than I was doing three sets of ten of the push ups too, yeah. which is pretty funny. Fifty, that's um, huge. The pull up thing, I still haven't really progressed much. Well, we just started, um, but we just started. But it's yeah. like I can barely get one and a half, maybe two pull ups, and, and you're talking this way, yes. not this not way, not a chin up, yeah, uh, because well, I can do chin ups pretty. You can do chin ups a chin -up are a lot easier. If you want it's it's this grip, this grip, yeah. not this grip. That's really hard, but that's the pull ups you have me doing. So I'm doing this, yep. and I can maybe maybe get two two in. Um, now I haven't done it in a week, so I probably can only get one in now uh, and everything. And then the air squat thing. The air squat resetting. thing was the first thing I actually started with. Uh -huh. And man, I could when I first started doing air squats, the first like uh, week of it, it was it hurt so bad, yeah. and it was just an air squat. It I felt know. so dumb. I mean, oh, but it was just an air squat. But again, I've been doing those air squats in such a functional movement. Um, and I haven't been doing them. Uh, I haven't done any movement like that. And so it, I mean, like the soreness was real oh, for just real. for three sets yeah, of anything 10 new air squats. Sore. Yeah. Anything yeah. New. And those are easy too. Cause you can just do it before you get in the shower, do one and we get in the shower and then do one later after lunch or something like yeah, that. And you, you know? can tack, you know, you can yeah. start with one movement, get up, work up to two yeah. or three sets, yeah. three, four sets a day, yeah. and then tack another movement on. Yeah. So you do a max effort, push up a max yeah. effort, air squat, yeah. move on. And then yeah. eventually I think pull-ups are phenomenal. They're a great way to fire up your lats. They're functional. Yeah. They're, you know, a compound movement. No one loves them except for tiny, tiny people. Except for short people with short arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the tiny people love them. Yeah. But I mean, but you still will progress. You'll you'll do one and then yep. eventually you do two at a time and eventually yeah, you do yeah. three at a time. And ladies, uh, moms, this is, if you're in a position where you're not able to make it to the gym or have, you're not really in a place where you can have a robust lifting routine yeah. right now, this is a phenomenal way to get stronger. I mean, seriously, really, really fast. And for women in particular, I mean, if you don't like pull-ups, pull-ups are like women's ultimate nemesis. Yeah. Like everyone's like, yeah. no, not pull. Yeah. I've never been able to do them. That's a, this is a great right. way to get better at them. And it's just this slow yeah. progression over time. Yeah. And again, you don't have to change. You don't have to warm up. You don't have to go to the gym. You just crank them out yeah. randomly. And all the these day. exercises, they're pretty functional. I mean, yeah. you know, and you can pick your movement. I mean, pull-ups, if you fall in a hole, you can pull yourself out. That I mean, that's, is what, you know, I want him to have the option. People what fall in the falls? holes regularly. <laughs> in the There's holes. a lot of Holes. holes everywhere. What if you fall in the <laughs> holes? Know. Oh my gosh. All right, what's the last one here, baby? Oh, uh, last thing. I just Good I tacked sleep. this on. Good sleep. Really try to improve your sleep. And I know we could probably do a whole podcast on sleep, which I wouldn't mind doing yeah. because it's a huge issue. Tons of women um uh message me all the time uh -huh. and there's like I hit 35 and I can't sleep. It's mm -hmm. such a problem. And, yeah. and sleep is such a big, I mean, one of the biggest driving forces of our health. Yeah. Our ability to lose weight, our ability to make good um, food choices, not sleeping is such a problem. Yeah. And again, we even mentioned earlier, it's one of the biggest drivers. The apnea is one of the biggest drivers of high blood pressure, yeah. which obviously has its own consequences. So really, really take a look at your life. And obviously I understand if you have newborn babies, if you, you know, are, you might be in a season where sleep just isn't going to be optimal, mm -hmm. but I find oftentimes there are things, no matter what season you're in, that you can do to help yourself sleep better. Normally you want to be, if you can, in line with your circadian rhythms. And that simply means you want to be awake when it's light. You want to be asleep when it's dark. And mm -hmm. a lot of us tend to sleep in more and stay up later than we should. Yep. Another thing that's really easy and simple is just get away from blue light at night. So that's all your screens. And I know I, I, <laughs> your I know cell it, phone. It's hard. And I'm really yeah. actually right now it's March madness. So we aren't going to uh, do uh, that we're right gonna, now. We're yeah. going to pin that one for, yeah, for April. March, for March madness. Yeah. For, for March. March. Yeah. For, uh -huh. yeah. Till, till, till the next month. But, mm -hmm. but like, even though it feels, you know, when you're vegging through like um, Instagram or whatever, and it's like, it feels relaxing in that you're vegging, but that blue light is sending all kinds of signals to your brain to like, 
uh, it basically is blocking melatonin mm. and you need melatonin to come yeah. up and cortisol to come down in right. order for you to sleep well. So if you're desperate, you guys put your phone away, turn the TV off, read a book with your eyeballs. And I know this works because I can scroll on my phone for an hour before I fall asleep. If I start reading a book, I am out, You're out like, in minutes. I, yep. And it can even be mm-hmm. a book I find interesting. Mm-hmm. I am out. Like it really makes a difference. And then yep. last, uh, make sure your room is cool. That's a big one. Uh, nobody's going to sleep well hot for the most part, unless you got something weird going on. Yep. And then lastly, there are a couple supplements that I think everybody should probably be taking anyways that really, really help. Um, encourage sleep. One of those at night is magnesium. And again, we already talked about magnesium being helpful Mm -hmm. oftentimes or sometimes with blood pressure, but it just generally relaxes you. Um, It's very, it calms you. It's very conducive to sleep. Most of us are mag deficient anyways. Mm -hmm. So a good like magnesium glycinate is phenomenal. Um, Torate has good research around it for blood pressure in particular. So you could look into that. And then the other, um, supplement that again is very natural. It's not going to hurt you is glycine. It's just an amino acid. It's cheap. Um, you can take several grams of that and that also can aid with sleep quite a bit. So uh, there's way more to be said. There's whole sleep stacks you could look into, but I'm just going to say sleep is huge. And a lot of you dads have a lot of sleep debt to pay off. So, um, do what you can to get as close to eight hours most nights as possible. It, it makes a difference. (laughs) It never (laughs) happens. This is why you guys are all going to die. It never happens. (laughs) I know. Um, go on vacation. Catch up on vacation. Go on, vac- like yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on yeah. vacation a couple times a year and right. catch up on that sleep debt. I think well, that's thank it. You, yeah, thank you, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, uh, as our show, Water Break, Water Break's going to drop every Saturday. Um, and here's where Neil, Neil cues the music. But every every Saturday um, at 9 a.m. Okay. It's going to drop on YouTube. Our, uh, um, our YouTube channel is um, youtube.com forward slash Water Break TV. Uh, in our app, on our podcast, you can, of course, our podcast podcast on iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. Uh, so that's where you can ca- catch it. But every Saturday, 9 a.m., 9 a.m., I think is when it drops. And yeah, uh, like so that. you can catch it for the weekend and uh, just look for it every every Saturday. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining Water Break. And thank you, baby, for uh, all your all your advice and all the conversation. Love okay. sitting down with you. Welcome. Always a pleasure. See you guys next week.